Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new video card from Zotac. This is the Zotac NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti. So let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. You do get an extended warranty from Zotac for this card. You can head over to the Zotac website to register for that. This is the dual silencer enhanced cooling version of this video card. It uses the stock specs uh, for the 660 Ti, but you do get a specialty cooler. Uh, which can assist with keeping the card cool, also quiet, also uh, provide you with some overclocking headroom. You get two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. It is on a 196-bit memory interface. I'm sorry, 192-bit memory interface, and that's uh, one of the primary differences between this card, the 660 Ti, and the 670. Uh, 670 is 256. This one's 192. Uh, and that's really only going to take a uh, hit if you're going with higher end anti-aliasing uh, MSAA type stuff. Um, anyway, performance may vary of course. DirectX 11 support, SLI support, you can do three-way SLI with the 660 Ti, at least as of the filming of this video. And of course you get physics support from NVIDIA since it's an NVIDIA based uh, GPU. Here on the back is a, sort of a wireframe demo of the video card. Uh, with that uh, dual silencer cooler, you're going to, on average, under full load compared to the competition, run 10 degrees Celsius cooler and 10 decibels quieter. On the side of the box, we have a few more specs listed right here. We also have some key features for the 600 series from NVIDIA. So you get GPUs for, GPU boost, for example, which will give your GPU an automatic overclock if the thermal environment permits. TXAA and FXAA are anti-aliasing techniques, post-processing anti-aliasing, um, which can really improve the look of your video games while not really giving a heavy uh, performance hit to the video card itself. So look for games that support those uh, types of AA and you can enable them with this card. You also get adaptive V-Sync, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, essentially, it will turn V-Sync on if your frame rate is above, say, 60 frames per second or whatever the, whatever the refresh rate of your monitor is. It will turn VSync off if it dips below that frame rate, and uh, essentially that can help prevent tearing or stuttering as you're playing your games. You also get NVIDIA Surround. You can support three monitors for gaming, four monitors overall from the uh, connectors on this video card, which happen to be two, two dual-link DVI, an HDMI, and a DisplayPort 1.2. Also, of course, DirectX 11, physics technology, 3D vision ready, three-way SLI ready, CUDA technology, PCIe 3.0, which is effectively double the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 2, and OpenGL 4.2 support. And next up, we shall take a look inside the box. I'm sure there are some goodies here, as well as the video card itself, of course. Uh, what's in here? We have a pouch from Zotac. This has an installation disc right there, installation DVD. So. That has a Zotac Boost, which is overclocking from the operating system software. Also, of course, your drivers. Uh, you'll want to head over to the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers uh, because those will increase your performance. This is a Canyon Trackmania 3-day demo, which I'm putting my finger over the code for so you guys can't see it, but that's another little uh, add-on insert right there. Zotac Graphics Cards Manual here. So this is a more generic manual about installing video cards. There we go. So it takes you through in the walkthrough if you've never done it before. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer series if you're not familiar with that process. The Zotac extended warranty information is in here. There's all the warranty information for the various regions, but for the U.S. it appears to be the extended warranty is five years. Just make sure that you register your video card with Zotac. So nice that Zotac is standing behind their products. Also some information here on the Zotac Boost Premium software that will allow you to overclock your video card. Also, we have some, uh, some of these type of accessories, which are a DVI to analog VGA connector, 15-pin D-sub, the blue one right there. So if you have an older monitor, you can use that. Uh, bear in mind, only one of the DVI outs on the card supports analog. So if you are going to use this adapter, which I'm going to say is OK. You can use this adapter if you have a VGA monitor. Uh, you will want to plug it into one of the two ports, and I'll tell you guys which one is which. You also have a couple Molex to PCI Express power connectors right there. The video card does require two 6-pin PCI Express power connectors. You can uh, hook up two of these if you have an older power supply that doesn't have those. But bear in mind, you will want at least a 450-watt power supply for the video card and, and your entire system, as recommended by NVIDIA and Zotac. And uh, next up is the video card. 
So there you have it. This is the Zotac GTX 660 Ti with the dual silencer cooler. And dual, of course, referring to the fact that there are two fans on there on the cooler providing airflow over the uh, aluminum fin array that is beneath them and then uh, cooling at least heat disbursement uh, from the GPU handled by the array of three copper heat pipes that you can see right there which are extending into those heat into those aluminum fins then the air uh, blows the heat away. It's an open cooler design so bear that in mind this is going to be ejecting the heat into your system um, but I did want to point out that this is a very very small card and especially for a 660 Ti. I've seen a few of these so far. This is definitely the smallest one that I've come across. So I'm going to give you guys a quick measurement right here. So I'm measuring from the PCI bracket and let me slide it down. So the longest point is sort of the tip of that shroud right there and that is coming in at just a just a hair over seven and a half inches. So this should fit in the majority of computer cases uh, that have, do you do need a two slots uh, arrangement there from your PCI brackets. This is a two slot cooler card. But uh, essentially what, what Zotac has done right here, and I have a sort of an example for you. This is a stock or reference model of the uh, GTX 660 Ti. And this is actually very similar to the 670. And what they did was they went with a fairly short PCB. So you can see the circuit board only extends uh, about seven inches right there. And then the actual cooler, which is a blower style cooler, is extending out beyond that. And uh, you know, it adds a few more inches to the car, but then you got a blower style fan down here. And then the shroud, which covers up the rest of the cooling solution. So Zotac has used that same circuit board, but they've simply popped on their own custom cooling solution to the top of it. So uh, your power adapters are still in the same uh, location right there where they would be. You just don't have that extra length of fan going on right there. And uh, it looks to me like as far as what they've managed to fit in this area, this cooler should be very effective as well. Uh, but speaking of the power connectors right down here, again, you do need six, um, two six-pin PCI Express power connectors to uh, power the video card. Make sure those are plugged in. Uh, the GPU itself is going to be located right below those, uh, those two yellow transistors right there. And uh, beneath that, you have the GK104 GPU, which is the same GPU that's used in the GTX 670. Uh, it gives you access to all of those awesome features that I showed you guys on the box, like TXAA, FXAA. Uh, the GPU itself also has a nice, sub nice uh, allotment of CUDA cores, uh, 1,344. Again, same as the GTX 670. Core clock on this is going to be 915 megahertz. Boost clock is going to be 980 megahertz. And uh, generally speaking, your boost clock can uh, even go beyond that, what's listed on the box. Um, most of the cards I've tested so far, the boost clock is a little bit conservative. It's going to vary depending on the GPU you get, um, but it can usually go a little bit beyond that. Uh, you get, again, 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, uh, 6.0 gigabits per second data rate, effective data transfer rate on the memory, 192-bit memory interface, and that's really the biggest difference here uh, between the 660 Ti and the 670 is that memory interface. And really that's uh, what, what that's really going to affect is um, anti-aliasing type functions that you might enable in games. Uh, you might not be able to always go quite as uh, maxed out on all the settings, especially for MSAA as you would uh, with the higher end 670 or 680. Um, but apart from that, I should mention the I.O., which is down here at the end. So you have uh, two DVI, dual-link DVI connectors. You also have the HDMI, and you also have DisplayPort. Again, uh, you can plug in all four of these and, uh, and power monitors from them. So you can do up to four displays. You can use three of those displays for 3D rendering and gaming. You can have the fourth as a companion display to show uh, you know, if you want to have, have internet browsing up or uh, have a communicator or something along those lines. Uh, one. Uh, point to point out right here for your DVI connectors. The upper one here is digital only. The lower one here, you see it has a little plus shape right there, and that's the analog connection for the DVI. Uh, so if you are going to use that uh, analog adapter, you'll want to plug it into the yellow port right there. Apart from that, uh, two-slot PCI bracket. It's got a little bit of extra gap there for some heat to escape. Uh, at the top here, you have your SLI connectors. There are two of them. You can do up to three-way SLI. Uh, out of the box for this card, at least as the, of the timing of this video, or at the time of the filming of this video. And uh, that about wraps up sort of a look from the end. You can actually see a little copper base plate uh, where, that makes contact with the GPU. Flip it over to that side, you can sort of get a closer look at the cooler and where the three heat pipes actually go and make contact with that base plate. And then uh, for most computers, when you have it installed, 
this is the angle of the card that you will be seeing. Next up, we have a late addition to this uh, GTX 660 Ti video, and that is some benchmarks. Uh, we weren't sure if we were going to have time for the Zotac here, but we did. Since this is the smallest of the 660 Ti's that I've come across so far, I really wanted to see how it performed. Happy to say it's done quite well, but that said, here are the benchmarks. Uh, there's our test bed. I tested on a 3570K system with a Z77 chipset, so PCI Express Gen 3 compliance. And for comparison, we are comparing a three-slot overclocked GTX 580, which is the former flagship single GPU uh, video card from NVIDIA. So here you go. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Zotac GeForce GTX 660 Ti, the video card that packs an entire 660 Ti into a just 7.5 inch long frame. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, do not forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.